Welcome to Ambient Discourses, conversations with musicians and composers who create musical experiences and sonic landscapes. My guest on the program is a trio from Italy that goes by the name PCM, Francesco Perry, Matteo Cantalupi, and Matteo Malea. I really enjoyed this conversation with these three electronic artists that have been collaborating and creating music under the N5 MDE record label. Our conversation steered through what collaboration looks like for them, some wisdom and insight for the solitary artist, our connectedness as human beings, and other interesting topics. I think you'll enjoy this conversation. Please welcome my guests, PCM. Well, welcome everyone, Matteo, Matteo, Perry yeah. <laughs> of PCM. It's so great to have you here on the podcast and the program. I'm really excited to dive in and start talking about your new music. Um, but first, let's let's take a moment to get to know you guys. Uh, and to make this easy on me and maybe for the listener, I'll go through and we'll go one by one. So we'll start out with um, Matteo Malea. Is that Malea? Okay. Correct? Yeah, yeah. All right. Malea. Why don't, yeah, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. My name is Matteo. I'm 26. I'm the youngest of the three. And um, uh, I just... Um, uh, met uh, Matteo Cantalupi first, and then we met all together with uh, Perry also. And um, I cure the the aspect, the visual aspect of the group, and um, a more wild side of the sound, like more noise stuff and, uh, and things like that. So I'm into that. And um, actually, right now I'm studying electronic engineering. So that gives me another perspective about music and technologies of the music. So that, that basically that's it. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, let's go to the, the other Matteo, Matteo Cantalupi. Uh, okay. Now, Michael, thank you very much uh, uh, for this interview. Uh, my name is Matteo, uh, and uh, I am a, a producer, a pop producer. I'm in Milan, and uh, my uh, skills uh, on PCM is to work on uh, harmony parts. So I, I do a lot of pads, and uh, I mainly use non-modular synthesizers uh, and effects like reverbs, uh, granular synthesis, uh, delays, and uh, and so on. And um, that's all basically interesting that's what I do. so i'm starting to see a, a little bit of a pattern that you each have a unique role to play perry why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself yeah hello everybody i'm uh, perry my real name is francesco and uh perry perry frank is the uh, name of my music project so my my name is Francesco, and um, my role in uh, PCM is uh, the, all the guitar parts and all the tape loop parts. So I realize soundscapes, uh, guitar drones, uh, and um, similar stuff. Interesting. Why don't you guys t uh, take a moment to tell me how you guys met and how how PCM came to be? Um, Matteo, do you want do you want to, to tell uh, the story of PCM? <laughs> yes, uh, I knew Matteo uh, in Milan first. Uh, we worked together because uh, he uh, he was helping me in my recording studio as a studio engineer, a studio assistant, and uh, we were. Uh, making some jam we, we were jamming together when yeah. we had time okay Matteo and me with a lot of uh, analog stuff and, uh, and synthesizer yeah. that Matteo got in the studio yeah only only mainly using uh, sequencers not computers computer yeah. only for for recording mm -hmm. and then I saw some uh, videos uh, of uh, Perry Frank of Francesco online I, I, and, I, and, I, and I liked so much uh, the way he was uh, making these uh, 
ambient music with only the guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, he usually makes uh, this uh, video clip uh, in Sardinia, in Italy, uh, into the landscapes on the beach, uh, on a mountain mm -hmm. with the guitar. And uh, I wrote to him on Instagram and uh, we decided to meet, uh, have a meeting in Milan. So he came in Milan and uh, the first day we, we met, we made uh, a three or four hours of improvisation yeah. in studio mm -hmm. with, with one guitar played by Francesco uh, and uh, various synthesizers uh, played by Matteo and me. And we started from day one to make the, our first record mm -hmm. that is called Attraverso. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the story. And then we, we finished the record uh, uh, always improvising music on yeah. that first album, o only on that first album. Also on the second, I have to say. Hmm. So I'm really interested in this first improv session you guys had three hours what, yeah. what what was it like for you what were what were some of the feelings that were kind of running through your mind or the, some of the thoughts you were having at the time can i answer yeah yes okay um so matteo got this wonderful studio in milan like near the city center uh, it was very old with these old bricks and stuff and the first time we we met there I think we we made a 20 minute jam it, like no talking just playing and that was our um, way of discover ourselves through the music Matteo and me also did some other stuff uh, together before but then um, um, I guess everything felt very natural so we record that that uh, album in like three days three days of improvisation and a standard setup uh, based on the guitar, a stereo guitar, and uh, some different stuff on uh, synthesizer like the Prophet 5 and some modular stuff, and uh, also some dr uh, drum machine heavily processed. And really, the first purpose was to uh, record this thing like doorless, like without computer. It was the first uh, goal for ourselves, and everything uh, like flow so natural and there was a three day of in intense music playing and then we select uh, among uh, 20 tracks or something and that was it the first album wow. was born in three days <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be kind of magical perry what was it like for you coming into the foray here you've you've got both the mateos that already had a little bit of history. What was it like for you coming on board? Um, I have to say that I, I'm the only one of the of the trio that um, had to uh, take uh, a plan to, to reach uh, Milan because I live in uh, Sardinia uh, and that's an, an island, an mm -hmm. island in the Mediterranean Sea. And um, I, when I first came into the, the studio, the Matteo studio, uh, I I was um, amazed because it, it was uh, an, an old studio, very dark, and, um, and um, I, I felt the, a, a great inspiration. So I, I started to play with uh, the two Matteos, <laughs> and uh, I, I was very happy. I was uh, that feeling of, of, of a real happiness. Mm. Gosh, that's 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 something else when you can have that kind of connection right away that's that's magical yeah, and yeah it was that, that, almost that's, magic. that's magic hmm. let's talk about you guys's musical evolution what brought you into music what got you into music in the first place so perry let's start with you i started when i was 14 so i had my first guitar and um, started to to learn Beatles songs <laughs> Excellent. because uh, Beatles uh, were were my my heroes my 
some in, so I in, in some words and um, and then I um, started to play all the other uh, music of the of the nineties like uh, Nirvana, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, and uh, all uh, that grand stuff. Uh, and then I discovered ambient music. Mm. Uh, I, mean, I discovered ambient music because of U2. Uh, U2 producer was Brian Eno, mm -hmm. and uh, I always uh, read this name uh, Brian Eno. I didn't know who 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 who, he, who it was, and uh, I discover uh, another world, another world of. Uh, of um, making music, so the ambient music. I um, discovered all the Brian Eno stuff, like uh, music for iPods uh, and all those um, beautiful uh, albums. Uh, and then fell, fell in love with, uh, with ambient music. Mm. And then I um, started to play ambient music. I started my own project. The, I decided to call with uh, the, um, my name in, in English, uh, Perry Frank, because I um, my name is uh, Francesco Perra. So Perry Frank yeah. is uh, some kind of uh, uh, in my in English name, um, and then started to to record stuff and uh, release an album with some. Uh, the labels uh, um, from uh, starting from um, 2006 uh, and then until uh, nowadays. Mm. Um, Matteo Cantalupi, how did you get started in the music? Uh, I am a classical uh, trained musician. Uh, because I started when I was eight years old to study piano. Uh, with private lessons, and then I I went to to a proper school of music, uh, and that that was really important uh, for me uh, because the piano is uh, is uh, gives you a, a, a really huge uh, vision of music, and then I discovered a tape from my sister, The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd when I was uh, 13. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to, the, to that album, I, I realized that I want, I want to work with the sound in studio, the recording studios, in the recording studio in, in production. And uh, I started to learn to play other instruments like the drums, the bass, guitar. I started to rec record myself with a four track uh, Fostex uh, tape machine recorder. And uh, when I was 20, I started to work in a big uh, recording studio here in Milan mm. at the end of the 90s. And I started to learn how to use the recording studio. So when I was younger, I, 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 I studied music, how to play a musical instrument. Then I uh, studied how to use the recording studio as a musical instrument. Mm, so the, yeah. the uh, tape recorders, professional tape recorders, the two, two inches tape, uh, 24 tracks, uh, uh, the first uh, Pro Tools uh, systems, uh, the analog desk, uh, uh, reverbs, uh, delay, uh, preamps, uh, EQs. Uh, I started to record music. I, start, I started in the studio as a, as a, a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. And after a few years, I started to make uh, production mainly uh, rock and uh, pop production. Uh, but uh, I always listen to a lot of uh, played music and electronic music, a lot of uh, European electronic music, also some um, American stuff like uh, uh, William Basinski or uh, uh, stars of the lead uh, and things like that. 
and a lot of European electronic music like uh, uh, Krautrock uh, from German, uh, uh, English uh, uh, ambient, or uh, uh, Apex Twin or Brian Eno, uh, Boards of Canada, the usual. Uh, so I have a parallel uh, career as a pop producer in Italy mm -hmm. of mainstream, mainstream uh, music and uh, great uh, fascination for electronic, electronic music. I also moved to Berlin for four years uh, and uh, it was great. I, I listened to a lot of techno music. Uh, mm -hmm. I went to, to the great clubs uh, in Berlin and uh, I met a lot of musicians, uh, of uh, alternative musicians. So that's that's basically, and nowadays I still play uh, in the records that I produce, drums, uh, keyboards, uh, guitar, bass. And, uh, and I also made some solo records of uh, ambient and, and uh, electronic music. Mm. Well, that is, a, that, that is a very diverse background. How about you, Matteo Malea? Yeah, you get I started, started playing guitar as my first instrument at like seven uh, with private lessons. Actually, my, my master at the time was um, uh, an old man who used to work at Orchestra della Rai for Italian television during the 60s. So I, I kind of I ate, ate him. Uh, at the time because it was very hard teaching but then i gave up uh, the guitar for a couple of years and came back and never <laughs> never abandoned again so from the time on i always play in some bands i used to like a lot of rock and metal especially i was a metal leader <laughs> and i am today as well but uh, i used to play in a band with the guitar and the screamo vocal and after the guitar, I started playing the bass first, and then my my aunt, who gave me my first amplifier um, and my first electric guitar, also gave me a drum. So I started playing the drum also. <laughs> and I know the Italian drum from the 60s as well. Um, after that, I studied at Civica Musica in Milano with uh, Matteo Cantaluppi as professor. And then we used to work together uh, I worked for a studio assistant for him, for like three years and a half. Um, I started um, appreciating music, electronic music a bit late because uh, I used to hate it as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, that metal, uh, metal head strength, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. O only metal, fuck everything. <laughs> but after that, uh, I mean, I started appreciating electronic music from um, a little bit of wild side of that. My, I remember my first uh, techno event with my friends and uh, I attended it and I started appreciating because it, it actually reminds me a bit of um, the energy of metal concert in a way. Mm -hmm. So I think I start from, from the techno, from the dance floor. And then I moved to a lot of more experimental stuff when I discovered synthesizer, especially before uh, attending school, actually. Uh, and after that was um, a long way deep into the <laughs> rabbit hole. And right now I'm really, really into the technical side of, uh, of the music. I'm studying electronic engineering for building and uh, building my own stuff and building instruments and um, I, I like a lot actually right now building speakers and with my future project will be a big sound system mm. and maybe we also play with PCM on that sound system I don't know <laughs> if it will build but yeah right now I'm, I'm yeah, I'm studying university after made, doing a, a bit of cinema recording as a sound guy. But then I really uh, understand uh, that my my way was studying again. Mm. And so here we are. Mm. That's really interesting how the, the three of you have such diverse backgrounds and you come to it each from 
unique perspectives in when you're collaborating. I'm curious about what are some of the challenges that you three have had to navigate through when you're collaborating. It sounds like it's an effortless process, but I'm wondering if there have been challenges that you've encountered as you've worked together these past few years. I don't I don't know if it, 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 it was very natural for us. Uh, I don't know if um, it, it was like we uh, ever we, we always play together. Uh, so there's no no particular uh, um, it's not difficult to play together I don't know if uh, if you <laughs> if you Matteo want to say something else. I don't know what to say it's, it's very natural yeah but I, I feel like uh, for the first recording especially uh, it was like um, continuous um, process like we play our first track then the second uh, which was better than the first one then the third and was better than the second mm. so it like almost flow like Matteo said very naturally but after that uh, um, we don't met actually a lot together because we live in different parts and mm. we're doing different stuff right now but yeah every time we we make an album we in the second the second album also we we met in the studio like we we didn't met for for ages and <laughs> start playing start setting up the whole instrumentation uh, and different setups and uh, we was mainly experimenting with ourselves and our, what ca what can we do um, with the instruments we got and what will our skills um, deliver to better. I don't know if if I say that correct or yeah 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 okay so yeah I kind of feel that way um, about this but not too much effort in a sense of uh, uh, difficulties of playing me together mm. like right. almost feeling almost feeling ourselves in the in the correct uh, mindset and mood maybe mm. yeah there was uh, something we worked together maybe with um, for example, we used to uh, get inspiration from the Brian Eno tra um, um, playing cards, like the one with uh, one big sentence in the middle, so very inspirational, very minimal style. We used to pick one uh, randomly and then maybe have a depth obje uh, objective in our mind mm -hmm. and something always get, get out from the situation we, we, we moved into. Like, uh, like as I said before, very naturally. Um, s some way, some tracks we recorded uh, were very different from each other in, in that kind of way. The, the our third album, I guess, if you already listened, uh, we um, make another process, not playing always together, but doing the recording uh, separately and then get together uh, after. We're going to step away for just a moment to check out the title track from the latest album by PCM. This is entitled Dreamland, here on Ambient Discourses.
but was really interesting to me getting into that way of thinking because we used to work together in the same room and then i was uh i was having a fear of not sounding natural mm. together but i guess we we made it anyway so um, i appreciate that and uh, that's kind of cool to me to not meeting very often but uh musically speaking feeling very connected mm, let's explore that for a minute what what do you think's behind that connection because this is seems to be a common experience for a lot of musicians you know not for all but some have described these moments when you almost feel each other's intuition where you almost know where you're going collectively and individually let's explore that perry what what do you think's behind all that i i i really don't know uh, all i can say is that uh, uh, when we first met in uh, in milan uh, and we started to play uh, i had uh, some kind of feeling that uh, we have always played together but it was the first time so it, it was very strange and um, um before i said that uh, in those days i was very happy because i uh, my feelings are um, always connected with the with the weather and um those days in milan were were sunny so i was very happy for uh, for that and um it, it was very very strange to, to start playing music uh, with uh, with the two Matteos um, because uh, um, so I, I had those this kind of feelings that uh, I I've always know uh, these two uh, persons uh, for a, for a long year for long he years but uh, it was uh, the first time so for the second album. Um, in Milan, uh, the, the, the was, uh, um, there were uh, ra rainy days, so I was uh, a little sad for this. So when I, I am always sad when, uh, when it's raining. And uh, I think that uh, uh, this, this feeling uh, appear in the, in the album because the second album of PCM is uh, uh, a little uh, sad. Uh, com compared to to the first one. Hmm. Interesting. How about you, Mateo's? Mateo <laughs> uh, uh, Cantalupi, what do you think? You've you've been in the, playing music for some time now. What what for you is behind all that that connection that you guys feel? Um, it's. It's not uh, um, it's not something that you can explain uh, with words. What can what what can I uh, what I can say? What I can say? Sorry, is that uh, you can uh, experience something similar when you play with people. Also, when you play with uh, people that is really different from you. I, I worked with a lot of uh, artists. Uh, during the past 25 years and sometimes I felt very connected musically connected with people that were uh, really different from me uh, also in musical aspects also in um, cultural back back background uh, so it's a spark uh, that uh, uh, is not really uh, uh, it's something, I should say, divine. I don't know other words. It's something from the spiritual uh, that connects people, also different, very different people. Uh, I also made other ambient sessions with other people, and uh, it, it, uh, it didn't uh, work well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe with friends, with really close friends, uh, uh, with friends with uh, similar musical backgrounds, uh, but it, it, it didn't work. So um, you know, it, it's 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 like it's like love. Mm -hmm. You know, when when you 
fall in love with somebody uh, you don't know why okay right. you can you can you can maybe you know because uh, he's nice or she's nice or uh, i don't know you have common uh, uh, hobbies you, you, you don't but, but, but the, the truth is, is that you don't really know why you fall in love with somebody uh, for me it's the same in the new with the music so it's a spark and uh, that you cannot control mm. you don't know you don't know it's almost so, like we each have our own frequency and yeah yeah that, that, that's the point I'm, i think yeah you know, we, we almost fill the gaps between each other with um, with our own personality yeah i guess how have you witness that in your life this idea of of kind of this energy or frequency of how people mesh together or don't mesh together to me like yeah not only to me but music is a i guess is a very very universal language actually very complex so i i think that we almost fill the gaps uh between each other in in a language that wasn't the one with the spoken words but almost like okay i do this you do that and we make together and i i don't know yeah matteo say that was like a uh, amore italiano uh but that's amore yeah <laughs> i'm more maybe philosophical So every time I approach uh, to record music, I'm, I feel like I'm with a, a, a think, a f- thinking at about something that I see before, or something that inspires me. Like for example, I'm always interested in sound that are not exactly sound, but more noise. For example, I like a lot of the engine noise of motorcycles and cars, especially. Mm-hmm. To me is like a very big synthesizer and near i was born there were a lot of um in industries and uh, uh in, in industrial uh press industrial stuff and my dad would too work as a electrician and i used to work with uh, with him uh, early before and i visited uh, those um, those industries and those fabric and they always fascinate me the big noise when i enter them And so that that translates to me very naturally so to our to my musical production uh for example i have also a, a techno and electro ambient project uh, right now that get yeah, a way of interconnect people it, it, it's called interconnect because um my my thought was uh, uh this an um, universal uh connection that there's between people especially young people like me uh, because i'm 10 years <laughs> younger than uh, though i think i belong to another generation about um what internet made to uh, my to the youth i i guess like uh i feel very connected with uh some people around the world even though we were very, very different backgrounds geographically and, and socially because you know that that internet stuff really connects us like Perry said with Brian Eno and YouTube before mm-hmm. i guess i also made the uh, contact with uh, music and the music i didn't get in, um i didn't get the opportunity to be in contact with without the internet so and i think that's another uh, focal point of maybe PCM and what brings us together e- even though we 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 don't know we don't know uh, what we already seen in each other on the internet but that's my, only my fault baby um but yeah interesting in, in pcm uh, the connection works well because uh, francesco is more the soul the air of the project uh, uh, matteo is the visionary the noises uh, and i am uh, the producer that can you know make order mm-hmm. to all of that so in this case uh, the connection 
is uh, is is like a puzzle. No, we can mm-hmm. we we have different skills and we work well together. So in this case, if we want to analyze. Uh, the situation uh, maybe the connection works because we have we have different uh, skills uh, and uh, probably without uh, Matteo the project uh, uh, is is more uh, calm ambient uh, with no surprises uh, and maybe without me it could be too much um, not in order so. Mm-hmm. too much disorder and maybe without Francesco the project uh, uh, is not so um, uh, it, it has no soul mm. you know no no air no melody so that, that, that that's how it work in uh, PCM I can see yeah, that basically, basically we have specific roles so uh, one thing that that's I like about PCM is that uh, we all have our uh, specific roles and uh, we don't uh, hurt each other so i don't uh, say to matteo cantalupi how to uh, make his production so he don't tell me how to make my guitar stuff so uh, we all respect uh, uh, our roles right and uh, that's the connection yeah respect and trust obviously you need yeah, trust, trust in each yeah. other to trust yeah. which what that each of you is going to make what you feel is the best decision for whatever you happen to be working on yes i those things are indispensable you know you yeah. especially when you're working remotely like that where you yeah we we trust each other uh, in our uh, specific roles. That's the w- one of the things I like the most about PCM. Hmm. We compensate each other. Yeah. So maybe maybe I'm too clean. That's why Matteo is uh, helping me to have a more dirty side, and maybe Francesco helped me to have more soul. So. And, and probably I will, I help them to have yeah, the uh, balance, you the know the, a, a balance a final balance. So the, there's there is also a compensation between us. So we we, we help each other. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I'm a bit of a mad scientist with sounds. So sometimes in the studio I used to say, yeah we, we we should try that. <laughs> Let's try that, and they never say uh, no. So. Uh, Maybe so, yeah, so maybe work, maybe it didn't work, but we always choose uh, after after doing that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I I read. Um, so I'm reading Rick Rubin's book on creativity, which, by the way, it's a very good book. I highly recommend it. Um, he talks about this idea that there is no such thing as a bad idea. Just try it you until yeah. you actually try it you don't know if it's a yeah, bad yeah, idea exactly. or not <laughs> yeah God, this, yeah i feel that too you know Let's what see. i what i see here the relationship of how you guys work together you have different roles not well roles is kind of incomplete you you have you have a whole complement of background and experiences and abilities and strengths. And what you have here is, I think, a, a fantastic representation of what humanity, I think, is meant to look like. <laughs> the idea that we can all be extremely different people, have entirely different backgrounds, yet if you if we work together to trust one another, to... Um, allow people to work and operate within their strengths with each other you you get a much more amazing outcome and i see that evident in the music that you guys are creating i mean i i mentioned at the the top when we first were introducing ourselves about how much i loved dreamland and i just it's a stunning piece to me the whole 
the whole album is just a is a beautiful experience and there is this balance of texture and noise with sensibility and structure and heart and soul and it just feels like a a beautiful expression of humanity that's what it, it feels like yeah, to me much. thank you that's very very kind and i guess you get the point of some of the records because also with the name and we work a lot um for the first record for example uh used to work uh with uh words uh that was shared between um many languages uh now with the second album pardon with macro i i think yeah and uh, attraverso uh, we we work uh, with, with the words in a different way for example we translate the the, the word attraverse which is get through uh which by by its mean uh, you know you know is very transversal uh so yeah i kind of feel that uh, we are trans very transversal in that way and we kind of communicate that through through our music languages which is pcm uh, albums and with the last uh, records i think we we got a, a different balance uh than the the previous one yeah the, the interesting the interesting thing about this project to me is also that uh, electronic music is um, can be very individual there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of artists in, in electronic music uh, that work alone mm -hmm. no you are alone with your machines uh, so when when you uh, think like a band it can be interesting mm -hmm. so it's a band of electronic of ambient music so you have to share ideas so you have to respect uh, the other ideas the ideas of the other members uh, and is more uh, there is less ego you mm -hmm. know it's more um, a collective work that is not so easy to find in electronic music right. if you think about is more, uh, is more yeah, especially in this genre i guess is more something that you do alone if you're on float on uh instrument you know you, in your own studio maybe or um a, a stable background like um, a stable place to do it at we're going to pause the conversation for just another moment we're going to check out another track from pcm's latest album dreamland this is entitled awakened here on ambient discourses
I think that's a that's a it's a really good observation about how electronic music tends to be very solitary and what you've experienced is quite contrary to that what do you what do you think that other electronic artists could learn from with from your experiences to as working together like what do you feel like if you feel like you had a message like you could convey to other artists other who are stuck in isolation or creating all by themselves if you could get through to them what what would you tell them about this experience of working together to work alone can be interesting you know because you you have you you have have more uh, freedom because you you don't have to listen to anybody Uh, and you know with the with the help of machines you can do music uh, on your own uh, but i should say that now uh, in in this uh, moment of uh, of of the history of uh, of uh, the, the problem is that it's not so easy to play together is a very individual moment for the for the planet maybe it's the capitalism i, I don't know it's, it's a long uh, it's a long story but what i can see is that when i am working with bands uh, they're not writing songs together in a, in a room there's always one member of the band with a laptop at home with tablets on live he writes the song, he makes an arrangement, and then he goes uh, in the studio with the band. Not always, but it's something common now. That is good. Uh, it's a good approach. Uh, it's very contemporary. But I think that if we don't want to be completely destroyed by the artificial intelligence, we should try to play a little bit more together make mistakes uh, don't use always the grid uh, the the quantize Uh, we should uh, maybe it's a good occasion to um, start again to for the human beings to to play together and make some music together something that's a machine now can't do so i think that's a lot of also a lot of popular music uh, it can be done by a machine it's very predictable it's very uh, stuck to very quantized uh, and so maybe it's a good occasion to to start to make some human music maybe we can in the next 20 years maybe we are we will have a different uh, kind of music, artificial music uh, mm-hmm. and human music. So um, that's why we don't uh, use computers uh, uh, to quantize uh, our music uh, too much. Uh, that's why we, we uh, except for the last album, uh, we always played together in the same room and recorded it like a jazz album, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. the, the kind of blue of my days were what, what was done in uh, three days. Mm. You know, they met, they met in the studio and they played together. And that's our uh, philosophy. I, I, I'm not saying that it's right, right. Uh, but uh, it's something that can save us uh, from the, the completely artificial world. Mm-hmm. So what the human being can do is to make mistakes, to put the heart, the soul, uh, to be not so predictable. Mm. That's what I think. That, that, that's, that can be my advice or my experience. That was well said. Um, maybe for the listener to try and sum that up, um, what I hear you saying is there is the beauty of 
hu the human expression, even when it's imperfect and it's has its natural flaws and it's injected with personality and experience yeah. and it's not so um, mechanical even which is the ironic thing that it's coming from ambient music of all things is that it's v this very synthetic kind of layer and yet but you somehow bring hum humanity to something that is otherwise very mechanical and I, I think I love the juxtaposition of those two ideas um, yeah. so you mentioned that you guys are you likened it a little bit to improv and jazz tell me what it's like for for you as when you're improvising how much is pretty much every song that, or every time that you guys approach together is this like an improvisational moment or do you guys set up a structure beforehand or or what are, what are your so-called rules of engagement <laughs> how you approach improvising together so um, we used to to record um, with uh, in, improvisations uh, with the um, on the first uh, two albums of uh, of PCM. Um, we simply decided uh, a mood. Uh, so um, before before recording, we we. Um, we watch each other and and say okay um let's go uh, let's make a, a, a call a calm a calm piece of music um and sometimes we uh, we decided to make some changes in in course like the the song the first song of our first album that is called attraverso um we decided the the change of, of, of course and um we decided how to uh get the um, the, the improvisation and then get the the change of course so uh, for our last album um so dreamland uh, we made um another uh, way of uh, of recording so we didn't uh, um meet each other and we all uh, we all recorded all our stuff from uh, from home um and then uh, matteo uh, cantalupi put together all, all the stuff and uh mixed all, all the all the music but um, so we, we decided to change the, the our approach of uh, making music uh, because of we, we don't we didn't want to uh, make another album with um, too much improvisation okay mm -hmm. if you were guys to perform live what would happen <laughs> would you would you like no, we, it? we didn't uh, do it yet uh, but we, we we are planning to to make it uh, in the um, next month next next year i don't know but we are planning to make some some gigs and um, probably uh, the our role uh, our roles uh, would be uh, um, the ones in, in in the in our albums. So I will play um, guitar and um, some kind of uh, stuff like uh, like that with, with guitar and uh, and pedals. So uh, Matteo Milea will uh, organize uh, all uh, all the visuals and um, make some uh, improvisations in the. Uh, in the music and Matteo will um, mix all, all the sounds mm -hmm. so like the we did in in, in our albums so that's got to be really interesting I've I've wondered about this quite often and I've even thought about this with my own music like how would you reproduce the improvisational nature live without itself yes. being improv um, whereas you have maybe some songs that are more structured and maybe you have some sort of arrangement to it. Um, 
so I, I'm just kind of curious how you guys would approach this if you were going to be playing live, how you would recreate um, some of your earlier works or even with Dreamland where it's been most of this, your, you each kind of throw your own piece into the middle and then Matteo Cantalubi tries to make some sort of sense and order out of it. How, how would you reproduce this live? Uh, that's an interesting question, but uh, we already thought a bit about how doing it by our mach well, what machine using. And I guess for uh, about the improvisation stuff you said before, I feel that our um, reproduction of the improvisation by itself played in a different um, background and with some, st some different stuff on it make uh, the, the perspective a bit different than the, the record itself, which was uh, recorded by an improvisation. Like, but I guess uh, we we feel the uh, we feel ourselves in the st at the stage like I, I would be for example uh, sending the the sequence the sequencer uh, maybe a running with, with analog synth uh, stuff as well and uh, maybe Francesco is playing in the right key and some that is feeling in the moments maybe we uh, we look at each other and really feel that but we we must. Um, we must do it. We must do it. You will hear it uh, soon, maybe. Mm. So it's almost like you're you're really creating a brand new moment, a new improvisation every time yeah. you sit down yeah, to probably, play. Probably, yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I like um, starting with a foundation, build, the building of the foundation, the yeah. foundation of the building, part, and and then we put on top. Uh, uh, <laughs> what we feel at the moment and maybe Matteo yeah. also play a lot more than me a lot more good than me I'm more a sequencer guy he is, he, he is very good at piano so uh, <laughs> you know I, I can change the tempo but he, he can change the notes <laughs> whenever he wants so <laughs> I'm working on it I'm working on the live setup I'm slowly working, so it's not easy. It's not easy, yeah. but uh, because uh, I really don't want to use computers. No, me too. So uh, probably we will use uh, a sampler, like uh, an Akai MPC Live as a main uh, starting point. The, the good thing about Akai MPC Live is that uh, you can also uh send me the messages uh, you have multiple outputs uh and there is one machine so you don't have to use a computer with an audio interface uh, with different tools you have one machine and then uh, you can play tracks that started from uh, as an improvisation in the studio but then became tracks so it's something that you can uh, reproduce uh, as the as they were uh, written tracks mm. okay you don't have to uh, improvise uh, again live you, you i don't know we, we will manage uh, we will manage in some in in, in a way Mm. I feel that mixing will be an important part as well. Like mixing those um, sequence, separate sequence. Like we were maybe a group of three, and then the some synthesizer by me, some th synthesizer by my the other Matteo, and they are always the live guitar by Barry, which is like the uh, the cherry upon the the cake. I'm thinking about the moments when you're improv improvising, and we've all had mental blocks <laughs> when when you're trying to come up with something tell me about a time when you guys experience whether collectively as a group or even as individuals when you're improvising together tell me about a time that you experienced 
just a creative or mental block and or a period of self-doubt and how you overcame that? I really uh, don't know about that. I'm, I like to not plan uh, so much about uh, about music. So I I think that uh, in in our life uh, we we're going okay. We will uh, we will have some uh, planned uh, parts like the um, the. The, some kind of uh, um, the, the bones of um, of the song, and then we we have some kind of structure of improvisation uh, that will uh, will will cover the song. So I would like to to do in, in that way. I think that um, it it could be uh, the most. Uh, um, the the good thing uh, about that do you find that having that established structure makes it easier on you and helps prevent those moments of oh, it, creative it depends block? on on the on the tracks uh, we we are going to play so uh, before i was talking about attraverso uh, the first track of our first album and uh, i can't uh, i can imagine that song uh, in in a live performance uh, with a, 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 a great start of uh, improvisation and then uh, a structure, uh, the structure of the, of the three chords of, of the song, and that that part uh, um, must be uh, as uh, as possible, uh, like the like the. Um, like the one in, in the album, and uh, and then the final part that, that is another improvisation. So uh, I think the the what we can do is to uh, mix uh, fifty and fifty uh, the improvisations and the struct structure the um, to leave the, the structure uh, as the as the as the song is. We're going to step away from the conversation for just a moment here. We're going to check out another track from Dreamland, the new album by PCM. This song is entitled Astral Walk, here on Ambient Discourses. Thank you. 
we we hope to to play uh, to play live uh, soon so i mm-hmm. i really want to play live uh, this kind of music mm. yeah me too i i have to say that in general when we improvise music as pcm we don't stuck we don't have a we we, we always uh, uh, finish the track okay what happens is that is that can be a very good track or a medium track mm-hmm. so uh, that's that's what i experience with pcm uh, when I work with other musicians, uh, and uh, yes, it happens that uh, you m- maybe when, for example, when, for instance, when you have to write a song, okay, you can have a moment of um, when of not uh, we are not connected with, uh, with 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 the other guys in the studio. Maybe you can stuck, uh, and uh, but it's interesting. I like to sometimes to to be stuck it can be you know it can helps you to um, go out from your comfort zone you have to mm-hmm. force yourself to have an idea okay that it maybe is very different from your start uh, idea so it's good to um, to be stuck the same time when you uh, improvise or you are trying to create something uh, as Francesco said, obviously our live setup uh, should be more structured. So, yes, we will improvise something, but around uh, a building. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I can say that it would be also interesting. Uh, I don't know if you if you're planning to make uh, a, a live experience like a psychedelic happening of uh, several hours mm-hmm. it can be interesting to total have a total improvisation yeah but if you have uh, 40 minutes let's say a 40 minutes live set uh, in a festival or in a theater uh, i think that you that you should have some rules if you want to, don't want to annoy people and yourself because it, it's not easy. Mm. But the thing that I would like to, to do some uh, live, uh, long, very long live happening, uh, psychedelic uh, yeah. happening uh, of 10 hours. I think it would be really. Hours, you know? Yeah, I think it would yeah, be really interesting. Relax, uh, yeah. Interesting to see how everyone could work together over that course of and numerous musicians and maybe you kind of just ebb and flow like the tide where each of you yeah. comes in with your own moment and yeah yeah in berlin, in berlin, in berlin i saw some uh, you know improvisation uh, with modular synthesizer with a lot of people in a, you know you know in a canteen with uh, four musicians for ha- hours and hours, and then they change the musicians. Uh, it can be interesting, but it's very, but it's different. Mm-hmm. It's different from a classic live set where you maybe must be into uh, a forty minutes, one hour uh, of of uh, of set. That's what I think. Hmm. Yeah, I had another thing. Um... To me, the, la- the last uh, album, uh, uh, the beginning was a bit uh, hard to get into, like the previous ones, because we were um, separate. So I didn't get that first good feeling as always with you. So I kind of bit get stuck uh, with the first track I, re- I listened to the first album. But then uh, I exactly like said, Matteo, getting stuck sometimes is a good starting point to change your perspective about things and about maybe your working, uh, your working process. And, and it was that case. So I actually uh, start changing my recording process. Uh, I use the same things that I have for five, for five years. And actually, it gave me the great, uh, a great result. So I hope you're happy to 
uh, with Dreamland as as uh, we are. So yeah, for about the live session, uh, um, mixing will be a big part, I think. Mm-hmm. Like mixing with the the mixer, the live mixer. Yeah, I in my interview with Stefano Contini. Um, from Entheogenic Sound Explorers, he described the mixer as just as much as being an instrument as yeah. all the other complement of instruments. It is, it is, definitely. To me, it is for Matteo, I guess, so as well. Yeah. So Brian Eno, we talked about, alluded to Brian Eno, and of course, everyone knows about his famous quote that ambient music is simultaneously... Uh, ignorable as it is memorable what for you makes a an ambient composition memorable and uh, maybe we'll start with uh, you Matteo Cantalupi um, I have to think about it <laughs> because <clears throat> yeah the, hold on. now at the moment there is uh, a lot of ambient music around, a lot. If you go to Bandcamp, if you go to SoundCloud, there is a lot of ambient music because it's uh, obviously easier now to do ambient music. You know, in 75, probably, Brian Eno had to use uh, tapes, uh, uh, synthesizers that were not so affordable. Mm-hmm. Like now, now with a computer you can uh, you can do uh, ambient music, uh, electronic music, pop music. Uh, I really don't know uh, what make uh, uh, what makes uh, a, an ambient track memorable. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to if, if i go to the studio and say nah, okay let's do a memorial mem- memorable uh, ambient tracks I, I don't know where to start uh, but i i i can um, recognize what is sound good to me so uh, with pcm that's that's uh, that was uh, the the uh, our approach you know we always felt uh, w- what were the good tracks i don't know if they were memorable because i can i can judge uh, our tracks i can't judge our tracks but uh, there is something that you feel so I don't know. It's like uh, you know, uh, it's like a good song. What? Uh, how can you? How can you say what makes a song memorable, mm-hmm. or what makes a girl or a man memorable? Mm-hmm. There's something that you can. But when you see it, you know it. You know it. Yeah. So I think that uh, uh, you can hear it, but uh, it's not easy to explain and, and to do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's why there are some people that make uh, good music and others that make uh, uh, not good music. There, there is not a book or something that you can uh, read to make a great track. But uh, it can help you to understand when you are doing something uh, that is good, that is better than other stuff that you are doing. Mm-hmm. So that's our job, to make uh, hours and hours and hours of music and then choose what uh, our heart mm-hmm. says that is good so that's that's what i i mm-hmm. hope that's uh, no that's is, that's uh, good it's, it's clear it's, it's clear because my Eng- I'm, I'm not speaking a fluent english but oh no you are no you are communicating quite well it it's it almost has a Taoist kind of philosophy approach to it where you can't really name it you can't really describe it it can only really be experienced to know it to know what what makes it memorable 
Yeah, I, I don't know why, you know, that particular actress or actor is really beautiful or, or, or I, I, I can't say why Scarlett Johansson is really beautiful. I, do, I don't know why, because uh, he has a nose like that. I don't know. She's, yeah, she's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, but, but you have no parameter. You have no parameters, no? You, right. You can't, you can't say, okay, uh, th there is something that's, uh, that's, uh, can, you know, you can, you can feel. I think that, I think that what makes the difference in a, in a song, in an ambient song, is a, probably the the human touch so uh, as matteo said there's the there are a lot of ambience ambient songs uh, today uh, a lot of ambient music uh, when you go on bandcamp uh, on uh, youtube uh, on, on spotify for example and uh, uh, most of, of of those songs are uh, simply drones made with a uh, with a pc with a with a program uh, with a software and uh, and they are not uh, they they don't have the the human touch so uh, when i listen to 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 christian fenes uh, 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 that is a, a great guitar guitarist so he gives uh, the human touch to to the to his tracks. So you can you can you can feel it. So um, that's why I think that uh, Fanet's music is uh, very m memorable. So mm -hmm. I don't know if, no. if it's right to say it, yep. uh, uh, this way. So um, the same thing for for other for other musicians like. Uh, um, like Brian Eno, so uh, it's it's always the human touch. The the um, um, so we can call it uh, even improvisation. So I think that's uh, the real difference between uh, uh, between the songs that uh, will remain uh, in the, in time and song that uh, uh, will be forgo uh, forgotten. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's uh, my opinion. I, I like that you're you're talking about the human touch there. There's the intangible qualities of Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> all the all the little things that we uh, love about I her. Lo I love Scarlett Johansson. I uh, love I love her. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Matteo Malea, how about you? What 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 are some maybe if you can't necessarily identify what makes something a certain way? Are there certain qualities that you see? or here in an ambient composition that makes it really memorable for you yeah to me is more like the um, uh, the sharing of feelings that you can get from a single piece of music which is like almost drumless for example i i like a lot uh, recently and in the past years um listen to S the sano the 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 wizard guy with the all the dropped guitar <laughs> and they basically did nothing for the whole show but that nothing to me one, one single nothing of that it's like the um, sharing so different feelings uh, and very contrast to each other so to me uh, that is is what the music can give uh, uh, to people who doesn't speak the same language but can understand through the a sound which is uh, what is your sound you deliver uh, or what is the sound you like um, the most uh, the the most out of it so the most um, i guess emotion is not the proper term but it's it's more like uh, how you can feel uh, between two uh, opposite uh, um, emotion like feelings about the music to me that is what makes uh, uh, a great tracks for example I I think about some of the dropping Grisol stuff uh, which is a bit like you don't know maybe how you how you feel when you listen to those but those complexity like um, 
eat you hard, eat you hard in the face. Mm-hmm. And to me, I I am searching for for those feelings uh, in um, almost every genre. And there are some people who I think guess my vision in the in that some music, some musician, or um, Affix Finn, for example, is another name that gave me first in my mind because he can um, uh, he can do some tracks like a, a stupid track with which remind you of a Luna Park like a pigeon uh, pigeon stuff uh, and and then some uh, chainsaw massacre which, which is you know the same person who, the, who did those but those um 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 pizza, uh, those depth of of, of uh, feelings is what really makes me to me more memorable. So I guess uh, that yeah, mm. that's it. I think that's a really good compliment of all three, all three of your perspectives. Putting all of that together, I think it, I think it helps paint a more vivid picture. You you can't really describe the memorability or the beauty of the track itself, but there are certain things that you can identify and well i really like i really like that these two frequencies resonate together nicely there's a nice rhythmic quality or about it or maybe this texture has some sort of nostalgia attached to it and then there's the the aspect of kind of feeling the soul and numerous musicians including that i've talked to talk about the the idea of melody as being the the soul of the piece that kind of helps convey the emotion and then Matteo what you're saying about talking about this uh, wanting to feel something and the only way you get all of that is by well, as you as you guys have been describing the adding the human element to it instead of just sequencing a bunch of tracks and just let the sequencer run all by itself but you're adding all of these little pieces of yourself your own expressions your your views and your history and you throwing that all into the mix and i think that's what ends up becoming a very memorable experience in listening to pcm (laughs) All right, I've got one more track for you. Let's check it out. This also comes from PCM's latest album, Dreamland. This is a gorgeous piece, and it's entitled REM Phase. Here on Ambient Discourses.
I have one last final question for each of you to round up the interview. And by the way, thank you so much for your time. I, thank I've, you. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, thinking about all of the musicians out there, whether they're just starting out for the first time or maybe they're thinking about venturing out into writing their own music, uh, would each of you take a moment to give one piece of advice that you have learned and has been one of the most valuable lessons for you as as a creator, as a musician. And why don't we start with um, Mateo Malea. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess my main advice is, uh, first of all, um, be responsible of what you do and um, study and then uh, never listen with your eyes but only with your ears mm. that's it <laughs> mm. that's good uh, Matteo Cantalupi would you like to come in I'm thinking about it Francesco <laughs> <laughs> all right Francesco you, go ahead <laughs> start, uh, and then I think because oh, while, while Matteo is thinking about his answer I can say that uh, oh it's it's a it's a really hard to to answer this question so what can I say is that, that uh, um, probably uh, the most uh, important advice I can give is to um is that uh, you have to be the first the first person happy uh, with what you are doing so um if you are not happy with your music uh, you you are you have to change your your job you 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 think i think it's better that you you're not going to be a musician so you have to be uh, happy with your music. Mm -hmm. So that's the um, what can what uh, what I feel to to say uh, as some kind uh, some kind of uh, of advice to give to musicians. So always be uh, happy and uh, uh, with what you are doing. Mm. So yeah, that's this is good. My advice. That's really good. Okay. I'm here. I'm okay, here with you. <laughs> you <don't understand. laughs> uh, my advice it, it can it should be uh, to have a strong idea behind what you do. So we were talking about Brian Eno before, and uh, he had this uh, strong human idea of uh, you know music that is not music. You know that you can listen and not listen so start with the strong ideas that that that, uh, that, that is something that maybe a machine can't do so uh, an idea that can be you know a mix of uh, your taste uh, your your life uh, the place where you live so for for instance we live in italy we, uh, we maybe have a different weather from uh, Norway uh, and maybe we can uh, have uh, different ideas uh, from people uh, from Norway because we, we see the sun, the sea is warmer. So I have a strong idea that is connected, uh, that is connected with the place where you are and the people around you. Once you have a, a vision and a, and a, and a strong idea, is uh, easier to do things. You know, you, you to to create what's in your mind, to create the vision that you have in your mind. Okay. If you don't have a vision, uh, you can't imp you can improvise like we did. Uh, with PCM, but but uh, wh when we improvised on the first album and the second album, we always had uh, an idea before, mm. you know. So it's not uh, only casual, uh, random improvisation. We, we always start with uh, a, a vision 
an idea of sound, an idea of landscape that we want to uh, put into the music. Once you have the idea, uh, it's it's really beautiful to create something. So it, it's a very maybe stupid advice, but uh, uh, it helps me to do things in the music, mm. to have before a, a strong idea and then to put it into music. Yeah, I think that's, that's really my, good. That's that's my advice. That's it's really <laughs> sound advice. I I think it's. Uh, the combination of all these all three of these things can really i think help people if they're stuck in their rut or trying to find their voice for the first time because that takes time in itself to really discover what your sound is or what your voice is and that kind of takes a little bit of time and discipline to even step away from music to discover more about who you are and what's important to you and and how you yeah. see life so well my friends Matteo Matteo Francesco this has been a wonderful delight to speak with you to hear your perspectives I I feel like I'm slowly building this arsenal of connections to Italy. Like I've met an astounding number of electronic artists from Italy and <laughs> I'm so delighted. I, one of these days I want to make it over to Italy and just meet everyone and we'll just have one giant meetup and yeah, I'll, do it, man, I'll, do I'll, it. I'll bring our synthesizers and we'll have an eight hour psychedelic <laughs> jam. We wait for you, Michael. <laughs> All right, I'll ha I'll I'll get started on convincing my wife to let me travel to Italy and we'll work it out. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Michael. No, no I finished. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah. Good question, very precise and very straight to the point of Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks so much. What a remarkable conversation. My thanks to these wonderful gentlemen of PCM, Francesco Perry, Matteo Cantalupi, and Matteo Malaya. I really enjoyed our conversation. It's always a delight because I, I walk away either learning something brand new or coming away with a perspective that I can think on and apply to my music, to my creative process, or just to give me a broader appreciation for the experiences and processes that people go through to create for themselves. It's just, it's just a delight. My thanks also goes out to Mike at N5MD Record Label. Thank you, Mike, for the hookup music and as well as the introduction to these wonderful gentlemen i appreciate it you can find more music from pcm at the n5 md record label website that's n5 md.com just look up their artist list and you'll find pcm along with links to their socials and their music thank you my friends for tuning in to ambient discourses Conversations with musicians and composers who create musical experiences and sonic landscapes. Until next time, peace. <laughs>